Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of TNM Coaching Unplugged and Zoran Todorovic Interconnected Podcast. I'm so grateful and happy to be with you once again, and thank you so much for growing our podcast worldwide by sharing. There's a lot of comments, especially in the Spotify platform, how much your family members benefit from this podcast. I'm so grateful and happy to see that some of you are taking time, energy to keep on expanding and sharing those resources. And that means a lot to us because we know we touched your heart and we touched your soul. As always, in our podcast, we have special guests who are helping you to become that better version of yourself, to elevate your thinking, to elevate how you feel, and to also elevate how you connect to yourself in order for you to become that best possible version of you. And today we have a very special guest, Tony C. Tony is a passionate expert in the science and art of habit change. With a background as a certified neuroscience coach, he's also an entrepreneur, trainer, speaker. He is a founder of MicroMega, an educational and motivating community that helps uh, people build consistency, consistency through micro action. And his approach is inspired by the latest neuroscience research, which offers guilt free, carefully designed method for busy, busy people like yourself to achieve remarkable and lasting transformation. He is originally from Montreal, Canada, you know, fresh speaking, of course. Now we're going to challenge him to speak in English, which is absolutely fun and wonderful. Today, Tony lives in Portugal with his wife in their beautiful guest house. Uh, welcome, Tony. Glad to have you with us today. Hey, thank you, Zoran. It's an honor to be uh, with you today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, lovely. And let's just dive into it because this whole topic on, on the habit change is really significant. One, I just have to show you that you and I recorded the Instagram Live and I did get a lot of uh, direct messages uh, on my Instagram afterwards saying how impactful and insightful it was for people, especially nowadays when a lot of the people are actually struggling to get out of these habit loops, people who really want to live good life, people who want to transform, they want to change, but something is holding them back. And you know, they're efforting, trying, but something is holding them back. So it was a very nice commentary after our, our Instagram live recording. So I would really love to kind of jump a little bit deeper into audience knowing you, you know, and you know, sometimes people always need to know who are you and why, how did you come to this point? So my first question to you is what has started your journey to becoming more interested in science and art of habit change? What happened in your own life to inspire and activate this passion or desire? Yeah, sure. Thanks. So it really started without me knowing it uh, around 2007 when I graduated from my bachelor degree in biotechnology in Ottawa. So I'm a I'm a scientist at, at base and I studied the bio, um, biotech and uh, during this uh, special night where it was the graduation night, um, the students decided to, we had a, a, a vote a couple of days prior to this event to uh, decide who was the, there was three prizes that were going to be uh, given to the students by the students. Uh, one prize was for the students who had the best academic marks during the four years that we spent together. The second prize was for the funniest person of the group and the third prize was for the person who was uh, procrastinating the most and uh, Zoran I'm uh, I'm kind of proud and also ashamed a little bit to say that I won this prize I'm very proud actually because looking back it, it all started you know my interest in uh, in habit change and so I, mm -hmm. this prize was was uh, given with in, with a, for a place of love and I was very proud to receive this prize but um, you know this procrastination thing stuck with me for multiple years uh, later after that and it kind of created um, a challenge within myself because when you are this last minute person, you always end up doing work that is, you know, okay work. It's not amazing work. It's, it's just okay. And deep within, I knew that I was, you know, capable of more. I was capable of doing excellent work, but I was never, you know, really doing it because I was so last minute. So this gap between what I knew I could do and what I was really doing was uh, begin, getting bigger and bigger and it was very challenging for my self-esteem and but at some point I really thought my brain was kind of broken you know I, I started to to look into into books into you know videos courses about, uh, around the brain around procrastination motivation mm -hmm. and this led to me you know learning a lot of knowledge about how the brain worked and in 2018 so you know maybe a decade later I challenged myself and I said you know what, I have a lot of stuff, a lot of, of, uh, of uh, techniques, a lot of knowledge. I need to test it on myself. So I challenged myself to publish one 
a video every day during one year, a video where I would share, um, you know, positive insights or tricks uh, related to the topics that I was uh, interested uh, in uh, during the, the previous decade. And uh, to my big surprise, I managed to, 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 to be this consistent guy and do this yeah. important thing for me for every day during a full year. And in the meantime, I, I got my certification as a, as a coach. And it kind of gave me the, the proof that, you know, I had some good tools. And it, so if I was able to change myself, anybody could do it, you know, basically because I was from this, you know, uh, last minute guy, procrastination king, you know, uh, to mm -hmm. being able to help people uh, build consistency with uh, the important things uh, in their lives. Yeah. And I also want to share, you know, that was specifically commented after our Instagram live that people are saying, my God, you know, how wonderful it is that you managed to do this for a year, that you managed to challenge yourself and stick to it and record video per year, because that really shows the commitment, determination, overcoming procrastination in action. So I'm really happy that you can role model this for others because few people really responded to that. They said, I wish I could, right? Yeah. So I wish I could do that. So when somebody, you know, listens to you right now and says, wow, this is so inspiring, just that notion of committing to commitment and doing the recording the video for a year, and they say, I wish I could, but I'm not, what would be your first response to that? I mean, you just, we, you need to develop the ability to start doing what you want to do with more consistency. And that's a big challenge because we usually always focus on the, the end result or the, you know, the, the big thing we want to achieve. And sometimes the gap is very big between where we think we are and what we want to achieve. And this can be very difficult for, uh, for motivation, self-motivation, or we can feel very, really discouraged, you know, and, and just quit after a couple of days. So mm -hmm. the, the first thing you need to focus on is just starting. And this is very counterintuitive because we think we need to start hard. We need to go, you know, intense, um, especially nowadays with social media. You know, see, we, we see a lot of end results on, on the Instagram, you know, a lot of nice uh, mm. people, nice places, nice things. But we don't really see the buildup and all the, um, the repetition that was needed to achieve this result. So uh, we are at home looking Instagram and we see, you know, oh, this person looks so fit or wow, this person is always traveling and. And we're like, oh, if, if I, I'd like to achieve a little bit of this in my life, I feel that I'm so far away. So I need to go hard. I need to go intense. But that's the, you know, that's the worst thing to be able to be consistent because after a couple of days, a couple of weeks, you're going to stop because you're basically, um, there's an error in the, well, later I'll, I'll talk about the habit loop, but you're, you're not respecting the third uh, step of the habit formation. If it's too hard, too difficult, your brain is going to stop at some point. Motivation is great as Zoran for at the beginning of the year, beginning of a month, beginning of a week, you know, science is solid saying that it's, it's, it's working, but it's working for a very short period of time. And right. so if you don't have a good system after a couple of, of days, couple of weeks, you know, the, the real life is going to come back to you really fast. And you're going to get stuck in traffic. Your kid's going to get sick. You're going to be, you're going to feel terrible for whatever reason. And then mm -hmm. you, if you don't have a good system in place, and if you're not focusing on just starting, then you will uh, you will not be able to 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 be consistent. So best trick is focus on just starting. And there's a rule that it's called the two minute rule that can be very helpful to for listeners. Just start and do two minutes of what you want to do, but do it consistently and scale slowly because you need to first create the habit in your brain before thinking about improving this habit. This is one of the important takeaways I'd like people to to remember. You need to build the habit first before mm -hmm. thinking about scaling or growing this habit. This is a very important rule and will help a lot of people if you manage to focus on go very small. Go think about your worst day during a year and, and, mm -hmm. and think about what's the minimal amount you could do during your, your worst day and start with this. You don't have to do it every day. You get yeah. it three times a week, uh, four to five times a week, whatever. Decide how many times you'd like to do it and uh, try to stick to that uh, as much as, as possible. What I love about that focusing on the start, you know, just focusing on the start is kind of, it's a hack. Instead of focusing on the bigger, brighter goal, the accomplishment that can be sometimes overwhelming, you know, when we just focus on start and keep on creating that habit and momentum, then it really works. I also want to highlight for everybody that human operating system that we're talking about, our infrastructure, how our brain actually works, how the neurology of our brain actually works when it comes to habit is common to everybody. So we all need this together. 
you know, a, a, when we get to understand, you know, a little bit more about how we function as human beings, then it gets easier, you know, and nobody really teaches us that, you know, nobody talked to us in the school about this is how you create a habit, this is why momentum is important. If you're lucky to have a good coach or good teacher or somebody who's a little bit more out there, you know, then we learn, but basically we don't. So I just want to emphasize for everybody who's listening that we are all in this together and that the difference is what we're talking about with somebody who is practicing certain hacks and tools, who's committing, creating momentum, and somebody who is setting themselves up for failure instead of success. So one of the coaching hacks, right, Tony, is if you really want to set yourself for success in, in evolving and changing your habit, one of the th first things is focus, as you said, just on that first step instead of the bigger goal, right? Absolutely. That's exactly correct. And I love what you, uh, you had it about. We're all kind of creatures of habits. You know, the, the, the reason why human or, and animals develop habits is because the brain is lazy, guys. Our brain is, is lazy by default. Is it? <laughs> because if you, look, if you look on the evolution uh, of the humans, you know, it was a good thing to preserve energy, you know. So uh, only if we look back 500 years, maybe we have this abundance of energy. But before, energy was scarce. So it was a very good strategy to not waste energy for uh, no good reason. So the brain evolved in always choosing the easiest path first. And the reason why the habit, uh, our brain, sorry, creates habit is because you want, our brain wants to be able as, as fast as possible to not have to think about a, a repeating situation. Let's say you, you have a toddler and uh, he's, he's learning to um, uh, tie his shoelace. Okay. So the, the first time, if you if you would do a brain scan as Oran of the kids, uh, the first time they try to to do a uh, lace their sho their shoes, like there would be so much activity on this uh, on this brain scan because it's the first time that the brain sees this particular situation, so the brain is trying to figure out what's going on. So he's gonna he's gonna watch the the bigger person who's gonna show show him, and after many repetition, you know, fifty hundred thousand today now ten thousand repetition. You know, it, it's automatic. At some point, it, it shifts and it goes to the uh, to the um, unconscious part of our brain. So nowadays, as adults, you know, we've we've uh, tied our shoes so many times, so we don't have to think about it when we do it. We, we can think about what we're gonna do next. Think about our grocery list, whatever you know. So now it's a habit. So now the brain doesn't have to spend energy to do it. It does it automatically. It costs less energy, and it really shapes the brain when we accumulate these repetitions. You know, around 30 days of repetitions, Zoran, we have some, some we could have a, could see a small pad of neurons in our, in our brain that has, has, so the brain structure has changed. Neurons have come together to make this influx, biochemical influx go a little bit faster, a little bit smoother. After 90 days of repetition, approximately, I say days, but it's actually, they're not, it's actually repetition. So if you do it right. something 90 times, it's going to be faster. You know, if you can do it 90 times in 30 days. Instead of, you could do it 90 times in six months, but around 90 repetition in the brain, your small path will become kind of a small road, neuronal road, where it's thicker and now the, the, the influx goes faster. And after about 180 to 365 days, then you have a big neuronal highway. And this is when it usually becomes a habit. So now there's no friction anymore. The influx is just like, it's just automatic, like a nice highway in, uh, in France or wherever, you know, like eight lane or something. So. Very so smooth. That's yeah, very smooth and very um, th doesn't require a lot of energy for the brain. So that that's why uh, we are creatures of habit, and we we try to develop habit as for repeating situations, things we have to do on a consistent basis. The the brain will go for a creating habit uh, as soon as it can. And also, I love what you're sharing that preservation of the energy was the original starting point. Mm -hmm. That you know that when we talk about brain is lazy, it's preserving the energy. And you just highlighted this. I never thought about that before. I talked to you that you know in recent years it's this time and space when we do have abundance of energy and we can relax around this. But before, it was most of survival and making sure that we have enough. So therefore, the brain was doing uh, being different in these activities. Now, let's explore this habit loop because I would love you if you can ensure that show the slide and talk to us a little bit more about that formation, what's going on, you know, and then we dive into other pieces because I really want to kind of set the stage for that. Absolutely. Yes. So let's, uh, I'm going to share this uh, image here for people that are so, watching uh, on YouTube and for listeners, maybe on Spotify. So basically I'm sharing this image with uh, showing that there's four steps needed to create a habit. 
So the first step is uh, is the cue. The second one is a craving. Third step is response, and fourth step is the, re the reward. So we we really need to have these four steps, as Zoran, to uh, be able to create a habit. If there's a glitch or if there's a, a step missing, in the brain won't be able to create the the habit. So mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to give some examples. I'm going to talk about each of these steps and uh, I'm going to explain to you, to, to people, how they can, uh, use these steps to, uh, have actionable things that they can put in place in their life for, uh, helping them create better habits or change uh, bad ones. So the right. first image that we saw is the, the cue. So the cue can be uh, many things. Okay. It can be uh, a time of the day. The cue can be another person you're with. Uh, the cue could be something we're going to see in, a, in our visual uh, sight. Uh, it can be uh, a sound we're going to hear. It can be an emotion we're going to feel. Okay, but there's always going to be something that's called the cue that is going to activate the second step for, for the craving. The craving is, um, is when the brain is going to release dopamine. Okay, so mm -hmm. after, after seeing this thing or this person or being this time of the day, the, the brain will secrete dopamine dopamine is related to to motivations or so ev like everything we do in our life like prior to to us doing the action immediately just before there's some dopamine that is like just me taking this glass of water and taking a sip yeah there was dopamine that was released for me to do it okay so the the, the cue is going to activate the dopamine release so it, the dopamine will will um, make us want something like will make us go to the third step which is the response which is basically the action or the habit that we want to put in place okay and mm -hmm. finally if we have a, a certain form of a reward uh, after performing this this action then the brain will will have all the four steps required to uh, to to create a, a habit over time okay so mm -hmm. like i said the cue can be many things, you know, you could see your friend on a Friday night, you're going to see you're with this person and you know, it's, it's so when you're with this person, you're going to drink, let's say, you know, two, three drinks and you're going to go out or whatever, you know, right. But when you're at home during the week, you're not going to drink at all, you know, because you, you only drink when you are with this, with your, this friend, let's say, mm -hmm. or it can be something you're going to see. Let's say I'm, I go back into the house after uh, our uh, recording today and I see a big platter of chocolate chip cookies, you know, in the middle of the table. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be like, oh, wow, I want to eat some of those. But I was not going in, into the kitchen to eat chocolate chip cookies. It's mm -hmm. just my wife cooked some this morning. And now I, it happens that I see them and I want to eat three or four. You understand? So mm -hmm. the cue is very powerful and it's going to trigger this release of dopamine. And then I'm going to go want to eat the cookies. And it's going to be satisfying to taste the sugar and the fat in the cookies. So my brain will be like, oh, yeah, that's good. So every time you see cookies, you have to eat some, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> And you get energy. So you get sugar. Yeah, so, <laughs> abso uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, sugar was a, was scarce for many, many millions of years. Now it's only yeah. become a problem nowadays and a big problem. That that's another uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. But um, so now, how can we use these steps, Zoran, to help people? You know, uh, build uh, a habit that you know, or some a thing that they want to do with more consistent uh, uh, consistency. Well, you could you could use the 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 feedback uh, the habit loop to uh, let's say you want to start to run okay you want to maybe lose a couple of pounds i don't know a kilo and then um, you want to become in better shape so you want to start running or walking so a cue would be how can you make your your cue most obvious for the the good behaviors you want to be more consistently so um good example that i previously gave uh, when we were talking you know off uh, this podcast is you could put your clothes and your running shoes and your water bottle and whatever, your, your ear pods on the side of the bed if you're a morning person. So before you go to sleep, you put all your stuff right there next mm -hmm. to your bed. And when you get up, you know, the first thing you're going to see, going to be obvious, you know, the cue is, your, oh, yeah, my running shoes, my gear. I'm mm -hmm. going to dress and I'm going to go out for two minutes, you know, to run or whatever for, for this week, you know. So make it obvious is very important. Uh, just like the cookies, they were obvious. So if you if you want to stop eating cookies, guys, you need to stop having cookies, you know, easily accessible around you. Yeah. You know, that's the first rule. Remove you know, them. so remove them and, and like don't buy them at the grocery store. You know, it's like th that would be the, the the best option for you because if you don't see them, you're not going to think about them, so you won't want them. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the second step, the craving. So how can we, you know, make uh, running more fun? You know, but well, 
I could, you know, you could choose, let's say, uh, a podcast. So let's say like, I really love the TNM coaching podcast. So I'm going to go uh, every time I, I'm going to go out to for a run, I'm going to listen to a new mm-hmm. podcast episode with, uh, with mm-hmm. Zoran. Cause I, and I'm going to keep this podcast only for when I go running. Cause I really like to listen to this podcast and I'm going to do it with running. Cause it's gonna, it's, it's called, um, uh, temptation bundling. So it's basically you, you take something that you really want to do with something that you need to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's say my dad used a strategy for uh, walking on his treadmill, uh, during, uh, some, uh, winter times in Canada. So he has a, a treadmill downstairs and he would watch this Netflix show only when he was doing his 30 minute walks. And he was not watching this show with uh, my mom on a Friday night. They had another show for themselves. He really picked this show that he really liked for him. And he was only listening to this show when he was walking on this treadmill. So that's an example of using the second law, uh, mm-hmm. the, the craving to uh, make our, uh, our uh, habit or action one with more consistently more attractive. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The third, the third uh, step was the response, if you remember. So like I said, this is the, the action. So this is mm-hmm. the, the, the habit that you want to perform. So, and that's what I said uh, at the beginning, if it's too difficult, you know, if you, you say, I'm going to go run for 30 minutes until I, I'm unable to walk after that, you know, like you got to, you, you won't be running very long because your brain will be like, this is not satisfying at all. I'm suffering. It's too difficult. I don't want to do that. So next morning you probably won't wake up, you know? So if you find yourself not doing what you'd like to do with more consistency, look at, is it too hard? Are you going too intense? Are you doing it, trying to do it for too long of a time? Uh, is it too difficult? and reduce the amount of time, reduce the intensity, you know, this is a good uh, trick to help adjust, uh, especially at the beginning, because like I said, we want to, to develop this ability just to start and do, do this action on a consistent basis. So it's not the performance, it's not the time, it's not the effort that is important at the beginning, it's just starting. So if you don't do it, maybe you're going too hard, so dial down a little bit. And after that, the reward is uh, the satisfaction you're going to get. So at first, you might need an external kind of reward. Okay, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you some for the viewers. I'm, sh- I'm showing this uh, neuronal Mandela that I created. It's basically just a picture of a brain with mm-hmm. uh, small, uh, you know, a small grid. And uh, mm-hmm. there's there's three habits that I can track each time I do a habit, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some color in uh, mm-hmm. inside the, the box. And I can see in my brain this, you know, the the neuronal role that is being created. So this is very satisfying at the end of a, an action to, or to just put some color there and see the progression. You know, it's, uh, it's nice to see, especially on, on the day that I don't want really to do it. Oh, well, look, you know, I've, I've, uh, there's a lot of days before that I already uh, did it. So I, I don't want to break the chain or I want to continue on my uh, good, good path. And I want to put this color on this, uh, this tracker. It's basically, it's a habit tracker. So you could use a calendar for that. You could use an Excel sheet. There's a lot of mobile apps also, but to, or a more visual thing would be to put, have a jar. You could put like a, anything inside the jar, like a small rock or a coin or whatever. And you could see visually, you know, the amount of repetition that you, uh, you've uh, accumulated because at first Zoran, you don't believe that you are this kind of person necessarily that you want to become. Okay. And if it's okay with you, I would like just to, to explain the nuance between, um, there's two ways that we can change our habits. And I think it could be very useful for listeners to understand the nuance between a habit change that is based on a objective or a goal we want to achieve versus uh, changing our habits based on our I- identity. So the type of person that we would like to become. Okay. So I will quickly share this uh, image here for people uh, that are on. YouTube, you will see, um, pardon the French, but it's, uh, it's very easy to understand. So the first we one love the French. Yeah, we just love, yeah, we also Alors, in language. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so changement d'habitude basé sur les objectifs means a uh, habit change based on objectives or goals we want to achieve. So let's say, Zoran, you want to run a half a marathon. Okay. This would be an objective or a goal. So this is the, the, the outer, uh, part of the, the big circle here. So it's the objective, the, the results we want to achieve. Let's say I want to write a book, uh, I want to, um, lose 10 pounds or, you know, five kilos. Uh, we usually start, you know, us as humans, we usually, there's something we usually want to achieve that is gonna motivate us to start a change in our life. Okay. So this is based on, on, uh, objectives or, or results. The second circle after 
uh, going uh, within. So it's the it's the system or the process. So this is basically the, the things we're going to put in place, the actions we're going to do, you know, to uh, achieve this goal. And the smaller circle right in the middle is our identity. So our identity relates to our belief system, you know, the things we, uh, we, we think are true about ourselves, about the world around you, about the uh, people around us. So, um, so the problem is when we start with an objective in mind, let's say I want to run a half a marathon, this is my objective. So I'm going to run, you know, uh, four times a week, you know, for, for whatever amount of time, you know, I'm going to start five months before, so I make sure I'm ready. But the problem is if there's no, I don't believe that I'm a runner. Let's say nobody runs in my family, you know, uh, like nobody ever did that before. I'm not surrounded with people that are really runners. I, there might be a clash. It might be a, it might be blocked. You know, I might think that, you know, I'm not this type of person. So at some point I, I won't be able to, to achieve this goal because my belief that I've, that I have about myself are, are blocking me. You know, I'm kind of in my own way because of the identity that I have right now. So the, the nuance and what is more powerful is doing a habit change based on our identity. So it's okay to start Zoran with a, a goal in mind, like you're running half a marathon or you know, writing a book, whatever. But then ask yourself, what type of person could be able to achieve this kind of goal? Okay, so these are very similar, you know, reflection, but it's, it's a very powerful and nuanced one. So the type of person who could could uh, do a half marathon is probably someone who runs, you know, on a you know almost every day a little bit, you know, someone that is very consistent, someone that maybe joins a, a running club, surrounds himself with people who, who runs a lot. So by s asking this simple question, um, you you will find very more success in changing your habit on a consistent basis because then you can ask yourself at every moment you need during the day, you know. What would a healthy person do in this situation? Let's say you want to, lo to lose weight. Would, I, would a healthy person take the, uh, the, uh, the elevator or you would, you would walk, you know, uh, the three floors of stairs, you know? Would a healthy person eat a uh, uh, hamburger with fries or it would eat a salad today for lunch with my colleagues at work, you know? So then you can use this as your mantra, like what would a, a runner would do? What would a musician would do? A writer would do? So the idea here is to not put our focus on one specific goal, but on the a type of person, because when you are becoming this person, we, when you accumulate enough days, enough repetition, enough proof that you are this type of person, every time, let's say you put your shoes on and you go out for a run, you cast a, a positive vote towards the identity of a runner, you know? And at the, at the beginning, you don't believe you're a runner because you don't have a lot of proof that you're just starting. So that's why the, the tracker, the habit tracker is going to be helpful to, uh, to, uh, to make sure you feel satisfied after you run. But after a certain amount of, of running sessions, you know, you'll have to um, realize uh, that your, your narrative inside of yourself is going to change because you'll be like, hey, you know, maybe I'm this kind of person because it's been, you know, two months that I've been running almost every day. And then if you continue, you'll be like, well, yeah, I'm a runner because I've been running for the past six months, you know? So this will become the satisfaction because what does a runner do, Zoran? It, just, it's, it, it runs, it just runs, you know? So you're basically the, the satisfying part, the rewarding part, the fourth step of the habit loop is just acting the way of, that this type of person would act. This is the, the reward, you know? If you're a writer, you just write, you know? So, but at first it, it's good to have an external reward and it could be like you could, uh, the only thing people have to be careful here in the fourth step is to make sure that the, the, the reward is not the, uh, is not the blocking the progression of the habit. You know, let's say like every time you go after I run, I'm going to go eat some ice cream. You know, <laughs> that's, that's not a good, it's not, a, it's not aligned with the identity you want yeah. to, to become uh, or let's show more and more. So you have to make sure your, your reward is aligned. So let's say you, you're working on, a, on being a more healthy person. You could say, well, once a month, you know, if I achieve, you know, if I go running 20 days out of 30, this is what I, I decide that is sustainable for, for my reality then I could go for a massage, you know, uh, at the spa or a day at the spa or go to the sauna, whatever, uh, that is, uh, that feels good for you. But this is a very important key. You don't want to sabotage your, your progression. So you want to make sure that the, the reward is uh, aligned with, uh, with what you're trying to build consistency with. Right. Yeah. 
because exactly, and I love what you're sharing right now because I'm a firm believer in the art of becoming, and, and you know we always evolve in our life and we do change ourselves on the level of identity. And once when we choose that identity of becoming and emerging into that identity, then the new habit can actually come alongside with that identity instead of us trying to push the goal and push the objective, but staying the same. Because you're absolutely right. If I am somebody who is identifying myself as a runner and I'm becoming a runner, then the whole habit of me running becomes easier because I'm becoming that person instead of I'm not actually a runner, but I'm pushing myself because I have to run because this is good for my health, because I need to achieve the goal and so on and so forth. But you're not actually emerging into that identity, right? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And that's why on the graph, I don't know if you noticed, but there was the, the Omega logo, you know, from the micro Omega. Omega, you, you hear very often this expression, the Alpha and the Omega. So it's the beginning and the end. So the Omega in my universe represent the person you want to become, the end, the end, you know, the identity you try to uh, to let show and, and be more of. So mm. when we base our habit on results, sometimes, you know, for the, the first circle, the, the circle was full, it was blocked. You know, sometimes your beliefs about yourself blo uh, block you from, from changing. And in the Omega, there's an opening because you know, that's, it's, you have to always be open, just like you said, because we're always evolving. And this is an important thing to remember. Absolutely. Because my habits right now won't be the, the same habit in two years or in five years. I uh, will keep some, but you know, we're always growing and changing. Absolutely. Right. So what I'm hearing when I'm coaching people a lot is that bad habits are more difficult to change than the good ones to emerge into. Is that your experience that, for example, let's go extreme, even though smoking is not something that a lot of people do, but nowadays I can see a lot of people vaping, for example, you know, like mm -hmm. I can go around, travel around the world, especially young adults, you know, like, I'm a wow. I thought we got out of the smoking kind of a reality a long time ago, but then suddenly everybody's vaping. And this is a, let's call it negative bad, bad habit. Yeah. How is it easier to break free from that bad habit in relationship to creating a new positive habit that, like you just said, exercising or living healthy at life or running? What is your experience on that? Because I yeah. hear people always say, oh, I can't, I can't. You know, there is this something is holding me back, you know, we explain what I need to do. I'm just curious about your experience in working with that's, people. That's a very good question. And there's, there's two parts to your question. The first part, you know, there's, we, we usually use bad habit and good habits, but the, the thing is we need to understand there's no really bad habits. Okay. So the, the, the brain always wants the best for ourselves. So even if mm -hmm. let's say somebody starts to smoke, you have two teenagers at school and they're in their exam, uh, end of session exams. So one decides to go run with his soccer team when he's stressed out, you know, and the other one is decides to smoke cigarette with his friends, you know. So mm -hmm. the two the two actions, you know, running and smoking, are achieving the same goal, reducing the stress. Okay, so it's it's positive overall when you think about it because the stress is reduced. Right. But right. over the long run, not everybody will agree that it was not aligned with being a healthy person, you know. But so even like the worst kind of habits, there's always a, a reason why for the brain to, to go this way. So, but it's always because we want to, you know, not feel something, you know, we want to stop being usually bad habits are created for, for two reasons, because our brain, uh, the, doesn't like the, uh, ambiguity when it's things are, are not clear or it's, uh, it's not, yes, yeah, just if something is not clear. We're gonna, we don't like this feeling. And the other one is the stress, you know, we don't like to, to feel stressed. So usually, uh, bad habits will become uh is a reason one of the two reasons why we're going to develop bad bad habits uh, and now the the second uh reason you know why the second part of your of your question is that bad habits have a uh, immediate reward and you pay the price later good <laughs> habits good habits you pay the price now sort of and you have the reward after that's why it's so easy around to develop <laughs> bad habits it's like, you know, just going on a shopping spree with a credit card, you know, we, we like, oh, yeah. we buy everything. And at the end of the month, we're like, oh, shit, we have to, <laughs> you know, reimburse yeah. this amount of money, pay, exactly. Yeah. But that's the thing. So that's why it's, we feel it's so easy to mm -hmm. put in place bad habits because we have the reward right now. Mm -hmm. And companies have, have understand this part, you know, the, the, the reward, the dopamine, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why when you, you know, now Netflix, I was watching Netflix last week with my wife and you don't want to have like, not even five, like five seconds and the, the second episode starts, if you're not paying attention, you're going to, you're going to get sucked into another hour of the show. You won't even know, notice it, you know, so Netflix know 
that you know like you, they want to keep you hooked same time same thing for for facebook you know there's so many things on the design of facebook just like the pull to refresh you know to see new content this is a really gambling behavior you know the neuroscientists are behind that and they know they want us to spend as much time as possible on the platform so the reward thing is uh, is a very important thing to understand and especially in bad habits uh, the right. reward we 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 have it right away and we only pay the consequence later so if we want mm -hmm. to break a bad habit zoran to answer your question we can use the opposite rules uh, mm -hmm. that are extracted from the four steps that I showed the graph. So the cue, the craving, the response, and the reward. So remember the, the, um, the cue I said, you have to make it obvious for a positive habit. You want to have this reminder, this visual reminder, or this alarm or whatever that like, yeah, you could do a sign, whatever, be creative, but you have mm -hmm. to see it to, to think about it. Mm -hmm. And now the opposite is true for a bad habit. You want to, to make it, you know, you want to block it. You don't want to see it like uh, first. as much as possible. Okay. That's the first rule, the craving. So craving, you want to create this uh, attraction. Well, for a bad habit, you want to make it, um, you know, not as at attractive as possible. The response, you want to make it the action. Like I said, if you want to stop doing something, make it as difficult as possible to, uh, to do the action. So let's say you want to go to bed at 10 p.m., you know, and not uh, getting uh, stuck on Netflix until 1 a.m., like you could install a, uh, a device, you know, that shuts down the internet at 10 p.m. for everybody in the house, like even the, 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 the teenagers or whatever, at 10 p.m., there is no internet. And if you really want to go on the internet, then you would need to go like replug this thing or there, there's, there's some, you could hide, you know, your, your bag of popcorn or chips in the storage room in the, the Christmas tree box, you know, very far away. <laughs> So if you are a Tuesday night and you want some chips, you'll be like, ah, it's, you know, it's far, but it, you won't, you might not go, but if it's Friday or Saturday, it's your night with your, with your spouse, then you, you're going to take five minutes to go get that bag, you know, but you understand what I'm saying? So be, be, you have to be creative, um, but you have to increase the amount of friction for your bad behavior and mm -hmm. the, the reward, same thing. You have to be less satisfying. So the thing is with the bad habits, you will need to replace it with something more aligned. So you cannot just like, we cannot erase these, uh, neuronal, you know, paths or, or, um, or a road or highways in our brain that we develop over time. But the good news is we can take and build new ones. You know, there was a story about this, uh, that I read on a blog once about this girl who, um, she was smoking as a teenager with her uh, her best friend. It was this guy. They were during the weekend. They were they would go uh, horseback riding and they would smoke cigarettes. The two of them. And I met, a couple of years later, she moved to another country, another city. So she stopped seeing her friend and she stopped doing uh, riding horses. And she reported that thirty years later, she had the opportunity to go back on a horse, but she didn't go back on horseback riding for thirty years. And when she hopped on that the horse. She felt this urge to to smoke, oh, okay. like because the, because the 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 highway neuronal highway was still in the brain, but because mm -hmm. she was not with with you know on the horse with her friend, you know she she didn't uh, feel the urge to smoke before that. But it uh, just shows how powerful uh, you know our our brains are. But the good news, like I said, is is you can create new pathways, and that's what you want to uh, to do when you want to replace a bad one. You need to. Think about why are you binge eating or why are you binge watching TV or whatever, like ask you like th these questions can be difficult. You might want to have a coach or somebody that can help you with that. But th that's the first thing I would do. Ask myself, like what, wh what's driving me towards this behavior? You know, what, yeah. what this behavior is, is achieving for me, you know, yeah. uh, with mm -hmm. the, the information I shared today, you should be able to, to have a, a little bit of uh, information or clar clarity about that. And then find something else that would achieve the same result, you know, and start slow. Like I said, start slow. And, um, and yeah, this is how you, you'll be able to, uh, to change your, your habits. And there's, there's different things also, like there's the, the, our environment, you know, so the people around us, uh, the groups we're with, there are family members. These are very strong, you know, our culture, very strong influence of, uh, of habits. Um, there's also the, the, the places where we spend most of our time, you know, our office, our at yeah. home, how our things are designed, you know, if you want to stop watching Netflix, you know what, remove the TVs or I don't have a TV in my house. I don't I have TV in my house either. <laughs> yes, no, exactly. So like, if you, if we're watching Netflix, it's either it's on a, it's on a laptop, you know, so it's not as fun, but you know, we can yeah. do it. But like, 
that that's the thing you have to be you have to be the architect of your own environment you know it's very important to realize okay where are you wasting your time you know exactly. I, when a, on a conversation i was talking about social media i'm using a special app that is blocking uh my 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 the, some websites or some apps that i know that i'm easily driven to when i need to be productive or work on some things i'm going to block these apps for a work session of one two three hours and it will be impossible for me to go on these apps so even if i go i like it's just impossible so i i, I have to that's the open. good fact that i would really love you to to repeat as well because you know i i know that netflix is a big thing you know eating habits exercise habits but i also think social media nowadays is so addictive because i also to know from my own research that you know activation of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous system that is all like relaxing and soothing and you know caressing and moving your body in a, moving your hand in a certain direction which indicates and signifies to your body now you're relaxing and i can see a lot of the people sometimes they reach out to social media when things are getting too intense when they want to mm -hmm. disconnect when they want to relax when it's too intense or they don't know what to do in the situation Mm -hmm. So how do you soothe yourself? And then they end up being in a swirl of social media and, and, you know, two hours down the line, they're still, you know, scrolling. So I love what you shared that we need to take a little bit more responsibility for ourselves to safeguard mm -hmm. our, our own behaviors and to install the systems around us that will support us not to exercise certain things that we know they're not good for us and then to focus on things that are good for us as well. So if you don't mind, Tony, please repeat this. You said there is an app that you can install and it blocks and what does it do? Yes, absolutely. So I have uh, zero affiliation with this app. It just works very great for me and I'm happy to share. So it's it's called Freedom App. Uh, it's uh, it's an app you can, I think it's, you can Google Freedom uh, App and you will uh, you will find it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's basically, uh, for me, it's installed on my iPhone and my iMac uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it basically blocks yeah, any website or application on my Mac or my iPhone, and it mm -hmm. works with kind of a VPN thing. So like, it's it's mm -hmm. it's really impossible to to uh, stop a session. So mm -hmm. like, be careful if you you might need your phone. Like, you will not be able to use something that you decided yet you would be blocked for the amount of time that you've decided. So this is what I like because uh, you know Apple started to there's this feature of a uh, screen time you know you could have a little pop up oh you've been one hour on Instagram but you can just say okay and then you can go back on Instagram you know so it's very not not uh, useful but this mm -hmm. app like you cannot bypass it and it's basically I love this because I'm protecting myself from my future self mm -hmm. you know when I set up a session you know I'm I'm being conscious about I might get tired during that session I might uh, don't want to do it at some point. And if I try to go on Facebook, then I will just have this nice white butterfly on a green screen saying you are free and I won't be able to access the website. So I love that. That's a way to, um, to uh, help ourselves uh, in the process of, uh, of habit change. And, and social media, like you said earlier, is a very challenging thing. And a lot of studies, uh, neuroscience, lots of neuroscience studies are coming out and uh, hopefully we'll see government actions also in Canada. I know there was discussion they're starting to to say that cell phones will maybe hopefully be banned for uh, kids under 16 years old. I think that would be uh, a very uh, service for humanity because uh, we, we see the increase in, in anxiety in teenagers and young kids because of, of social media of screen time. And this is, uh, I think, very terrible. So uh, we need to change that. Yeah. Absolutely. If you're a parent, that's a good call for action for you, you know, and if you are somebody who loves himself, that's also a good call for action for you as well. So, Tony, of course, we can talk about this for eternity. I think this is one <laughs> of this topic. This is one of this topic that you can unfold more and more and more and more. So for the people who are listening to the podcast, we're going to reference Tony's, uh, you know, handles also his website and how you can reach him. Uh, and then how you can learn more from him, because I think this is one of these important points in our life when we really need to put attention to this. You know, it's sometimes, you know, in our human existence, we can just glide with certain behaviors. But I think that our life as it is right now with the artificial intelligence, with digitalization of everything, with the stressors of life, with our demanding and challenging coexistence is actually driving us to create a solid habits to be able to become the most functional human beings. And I do this for myself. Once when I've managed to sustain my positive habits of waking up in the morning, exercising, jogging, doing yoga, stretching, drinking water, 
making sure I'm away from the screen time, social time with my friends, uh, playing with my dog, whatever positive habits that I know I need to put in place, my life completely transforms. And the beautiful thing that we know, Tony, both you and I, is that we all know what we need to do. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of us doing this. If you ask the average human being, what do you need to do to be able to be content, satisfied, happy? What are the habits that you need to initiate? And what are the habits that you need to let go of? Everybody will tell you immediately, I know, right? I know. That's I need okay. to do this, 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 and this. I need to stop this, this, and this, and this. And if I do this, I will be great, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, isn't it? So it's just about, you know, creating that system and structure, starting, learning, learning the science behind this, learning about your brain, learning about how do you set yourself for success and just showing up in your life and doing it responsibly. This is for me. So Tony, any last few words from you? How would you like to leave audience with anything that you would love to share to feel complete with this recording today? Yeah, thanks. So, well, yeah, the, the big takeaway is why, you know, small habits are matter. Why are they important? You know, and I would say, you know, it's not because the, it, it will allow you to be in the best shape of your life. It's not because the, it will allow you to have the amount of money you want in your life. It's not because it will allow you to have the relationships you want in your, in your life. Although, yes, it will help you to have all this. But the real reason why the small habits are very important is because they allow you to, to become the person you want to be. And that's when I, when I realized that I was like, oh, wow, okay, if I can master this subject of habit change, then I will be able to be the person that I want whenever I want and, and, and you know, achieve whatever I, I want in my life. And that mm -hmm. was a real breakthrough for me. So never forget that. And also uh, just, just start the thing that I said earlier about the importance of just starting, being consistent with starting. And this is very counterintuitive, I know, but, you know, use a tracker, see your progress, just be this person who starts for two minutes doing this action. You can scale with 1% uh, every day if you want. You will see it's going to gonna be very small increments. And it's you'll at the end of the year, let's say you start with two minutes walking. If you respect this 1% increment every day, you'll be walking for, I think, is 76 minutes uh, in, in day 365. But at the beginning, it will be very, very smooth. So focus on just being this person who starts doing what you want in a very small effort, very small amount of friction and but do it consistently and uh, you you'll see that you know building habit can be very easy and can go uh, really smooth but you need to know like you said these these uh these uh you have to have this knowledge and you have to be able to implement the your own system and that's that's why the the art you know the, the science and art of habit change is that it's, it's very personalized thing you know and that's what i realized yeah. there's no one size fit all thing do this and you'll be good unfortunately mm -hmm. it's very 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 personal uh, depends on our DNA and our environment and our family, a lot of stuff. Of course, support structure, everything again. But I, I, what I love about this is that what I said, Tony, that we're all in this together. And, and Absolutely. You know, all human beings and the human beings, has, they have certain operating functionality. As you see, Tony mentioned hormones, stimulations, reward. We all have that. We all have that. If I walk into my house and I see the jar of the chocolate cookies, I would like, yay, because my brain will remember, oh my God, this is so good. I remember all these times when I did that and also you know keep on investigating Tony, this micro movements micro habits and i love that mm -hmm. you micro to macro that sometimes a small tiny steps and i see a lot of people like a typical thing they want to make a new year's uh, resolutions and then they i will do this i would lose 100 kilos and i would you know i would run i would create and then you know a few few days or a few weeks or a few months down the road they do nothing they go back so set yourself for success to micro movements, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what, guys? If I was elected the king of procrastination, and now I'm helping people build consistency, anybody yeah. can do it. I reassure you, you can do it. Anybody can do it. I, I believe in you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, for believing in all of us. Thank you so much for your wisdom. Thank you so much for your presence. And for the audience, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to TNM Coaching Unplugged. We're super happy for our dedicated community of people who are learning and growing alongside with us. Today's show was really inspiring to me. I hope it's going to be inspiring for you. It will get you to the next level of yourself by creating positive new habits, letting go of the old habits. Keep on sharing us, liking us, and share it with your family and friends. This is a good one. Thank you so much, Tony, once again, and we'll see each other soon. Zoran, thank you so much, and thanks to the listeners. I hope you enjoyed listening as much as I enjoyed recording. Thanks so much. All the best.